Hello, welcome. Welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonye Afiasimama. It's the 30th of September. Let's get the blind road back to the year 1773. Now, as you can see from this picture, this was the day that um, Poland was partitioned. Um, I'm going to read a bit about this interesting occurrence. So, partitions of Poland, 1772 to 1795. The Polish SEJM, so -E or the Polish legislature, ratified the treaty that led to the first partition of Poland by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. Voting to effect this change took place on this date, the date stated in this um, picture here, the 18th of September, 1773. The petitions of Poland were three petitions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth that took place toward the end of the 18th century and ended, obviously, the end of the 18th century, 1773, and ended the existence of the state, resulting in the elimination of sovereign Poland and Lithuania for 123 years. So, this picture says it all. This is what happened on this day in 1773. Okay, so let's move on to the next occurrence on this day. The musician Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So, 1791, the opera, The Magic Flute by Mozart, premiered in Vienna. Full name Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He was baptized as Johannes Chrysostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart. He was a prolific and influential composer of the classical period. Born in Salzburg, famous also for the sound of music, by the way, in the Holy Roman Empire, Mozart showed prodigious ability from his earliest childhood. Already competent on keyboard and violin, he composed from the age of five performed before European royalty. At 17, Mozart was engaged as a musician at the Salzburg court, but grew restless and traveled in search of a better position. While visiting Vienna in 1781, he was dismissed from his Salzburg position. He chose to stay in Vienna, where he achieved fame but little financial security. During his final years in Vienna, he composed many of his best-known symphonies concertos and operas, and portions of the Requiem, which was largely unfinished at the time of his death, his early death at the age of 35. The circumstances of his death have much, have been much mythologized. So, in other words, yeah, circumstances of his death have now become a myth, basically. So we don't really know why he died at such a young age. So next we have Jean Perrin. He was a French physicist who was born in 1870. On this day, he received the Nobel Prize of Physics in 1926 for his studies of the Brownian motion of minute particles. Next we have this city called Antananarivo. It's the capital of Madagascar. So on this day in 1895, French troops occupied the capital, Antananarivo, after the refusal of Renil Lairvoni, the prime minister, to submit to French suzerainty. So suzerainty. Okay. Antananarivo, also known by its colonial shorthand form Tana, is the capital and largest city of Madagascar. So that's what's pictured here. A larger urban area surrounding the city known as Antananarivo Renivo Hitra or Mother Hill or Antananarivo capital is the capital of the Analmanga region. Anala Manga region. I beg your pardon. Okay, so that was history on this day in 1895.
Let's move on to the year 1924, Truman Capote. Pictured here. I love this picture. Just love the ambience. He was an American novelist, short story writer, and playwright. Known, perhaps, best known, perhaps, for the novel In Cold Blood, which um, was published in 1965. So he was born, like I said, on this day in 1924. Um, Truman Garcia Capote is his full name. He's a short story writer. He's a screenwriter also, and uh, a playwright and actor. Several of his short stories, novels and plays have been praised as literary classics, including the novella, the no novella Breakfast at Tiffany's. I love that film which um, premiered in 1958, and the true crime novel In Cold Blood, I mentioned earlier, 1966, which he labeled a non-fiction novel. Interesting. His works have been adapted into more than 20 films and television dramas. Guys, if you haven't seen Breakfast at Tiffany's, absolutely beautiful movie. Go check it out. Okay, so Babe Ruth on this day. I have featured this guy quite a few times as well, so go check out my other videos on Babe Ruth. But this is a drawing of Babe Ruth. On this day, 1927, American baseball player Babe Ruth became the first player to hit 60 home runs in a single season. His record stood until Roger Maris hit 61 in 1961. Wow. So that's Babe Ruth for you who made history on this day as the first player to hit 60 home runs in a single season in baseball, of course. Okay, 1928, on this day, Ellie Weasel, American author. She was Romanian, she was a Romanian-born, or he was a Romanian-born American writer, professor, political activist, Nobel laureate, and Holocaust survivor. He authored 57 books, written mostly in French and English, including Night, a work based on his experience as a Jewish prisoner in the Auschwitz and Buchenwald concentration camps. So this is the guy, Ellie Weasel, who I erroneously thought was a lady because it sounds like a woman's name. Anyway, so that's Ellie Weasel, American author, and you can see um, the concentration um, camp at Auschwitz, pictured right here. And uh, if you can see the red circle, that is Ellie Weasel, who of course survived the concentration camp at Auschwitz. Um, another picture of Ellie, Mr. Ellie Weasel. Um, that's not him, beg your pardon. So that's Ellie Weasel. Another picture of him. So he was a Holocaust survivor. Um, in short, Romanian-born American writer, professor, Holocaust survivor, Nobel laureate. So do a Google search on him. Might be an interesting, sounds like an interesting um, character. You know, the experiences he would have gone through in the concentration camp of Auschwitz and how he escaped Auschwitz and so on. Um, so, yeah, Elie Wiesel, who survived uh, Hitler's uh, concentration camp at Auschwitz. He was born on this day in 1928. Let's move on to the year 1935. And the picture you saw a few seconds ago was that of the young Johnny Mathis. So Johnny Mathis is an American singer known for the song When a Child is Born. For me, that's the, my um, favorite song, song of his. Da, 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 when a child is born. It's usually played around Christmas, isn't it? So that's the young Johnny Mathis, and um, born on this day in 1935. I'm going to show you some more pictures of Johnny Mathis. So happy birthday, Mr. Johnny Mathis, who is 85 today. That's another picture of the young Johnny Mathis. 
crooning away. Okay, 1938 on this day, Neville Chamberlain Munich Agreement signed. So, on this day, the notorious Munich Agreement, in which Britain's Neville Chamberlain, pictured here, encouraged Britain and France to appease Adolf Hitler's demands in the hope of preventing World War II, was reached on this day in 1938. Of course, that did it work, did it? Um, yeah, you're trying to appease <clears throat> a cycle. It usually doesn't work, and it didn't work. Um, as I say, the rest is history. Um, the third world, the second world war, I beg your pardon, started a year later in 1939. So that's Neville Chamberlain who tried to prevent the second world war by trying to appease Hitler, which of course didn't work. Kudos to him, at least for. We're giving it a shot. So, 1955, on this day, American actor James Dean, pictured right here, who became a symbol of the confused, restless, and idealistic youth of the 1950s, died in an autom automobile crash as he drove to a car rally, ironically, in Salinas, California. So, that is James Dean, American actor, a dapper American actor who died on this day in 1955. Exactly 20 years later, Marion Cotillard, French actress, pictured here, singer-songwriter, musician, and environmentalist, was born. She is the recipient of an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, a Golden Globe Award, two Cesar Awards, a European, a European Award, and a Lumiere Award. She became a Knight of the Order of Arts and Letters in France in 2010 and was promoted to Officer in 2016. She was a face of Lady Dio handbag from 2008 to 2017. Interesting. In 2020, she became the new face of the Chanel No. 5 fragrance. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on to the year, <clears throat> like a part of 1980. On this day, this lady, known as Martina Hingis, real name Martina Hingis Sova, was born. She is a Swiss former professional tennis player. She spent a total of 209 weeks as a singles number one and 90 weeks as doubles world number one holding both number one rankings simultaneously for 29 weeks. Wow. She won five Grand Slam singles titles, 13 Grand Slam women's doubles titles, winning a calendar year doubles Grand Slam in 1998, and seven Grand Slam mixed doubles singles for a combined total of 25 major titles. In addition, she won the season-ending WTA finals two times in singles and three times in doubles. An Olympic silver medal and a record 17 tier, 17 tier one singles title. So, Martina Hingis, born on this day in 1980. So, happy birthday, Martina Hingis. She would be 40 years old today. On that note, guys, we shall wrap it up for today's edition of Today in History. My name again is Sotonye Afiesimama. Thanks for dropping by. I hope to see you tomorrow. In the meantime, click the notification bell to receive updates of my video uploads. Share this video with family and friends. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I shall see you tomorrow, the 1st of October, for another hopefully interesting, educative edition of Today in History. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.